it's Mike V from Reliable Automotive Equipment. Gonna spend some time today going over the Fronius Aluminum MIG Welder. Show you how to do some menu changes on it, how to do your hot start, cold ending, get everything set up for you. The Fronius 2700, also known as the VAS 6388A. Main power switch is in the back. So we turn power on, let the board start up. Your main description of what's going to be inside the machine is right here. So this is going to give us wire size, the type of the wire, what type of trigger we want to have for control of the gun, and what type of gun assembly we're going to be using. So it's a very basic setup. On the Audi setup, we do use a ALSI 12 wire, which is a 4000 series wire. It is a 1.2 in diameter. So on our scale over here, just hit diameter of the wire and we're going to bring it on and select it to 1.2. The type of wire, your choices are steel wire, aluminum wire, copper based wire for MIG brazing, flux cord wire, stainless steel wire. So this machine will do a lot of different things. All we're going to do is tell it the information of the product that we have in it and this will set up all the right parameters for the welding on this system. We are going to be on the aluminum setting on this. It gives us three choices of settings right here, a 1050, which we really don't use in this industry right now, a 5356 or a 4043. So the 4043 represents a 4000 series setup of parameters. The 5356 represents a 5000 series of parameters. Audi does use a 4000 series, so we're going to keep it on 4043, and you can adjust it with these buttons either way. And as you see things change as I hit the buttons, it's just pulling up different parameters for the different welding wires on the different temperatures that they melt at. The next step over here is we're going to decide what type of trigger control we want our gun to have. So the first one up here, conventional, you pull the trigger, it's on, you let go, it's off. It's just like a standard MIG welder. A trigger lock, you would pull the trigger, it's on, you let go, the gun is still going to stay on until you pull and release the trigger again. It's not going to change anything in amperage, it's just going to lock the trigger on so you don't have to hold it. The next one here is a special four step. This is the one that we're really going to end up using is because on the four step, we can actually pull the trigger, it'll give us a hot start, it'll give us a hotter amperage rating. We let go of the trigger, it's going to weld at our normal setting that we have on there. And when we get to the end of the weld, we're going to pull the trigger and hold it and it's going to cut the power in half so that we can actually take the little spot at the end, the little divot, and fill it in and not burn through. So the four step is what we're going to use for it. In aluminum welding, we want to do that because we need heat management. When we start to weld out, it's going to be the metal's going to be cold. It's going to be very hard to get a weld started, so we want more heat in the beginning. When we go to weld to normal, we'll run down the panel at our normal amperage rating. When we get to the end of the panel, now we have too much heat in the panel. So by pulling the trigger at the end and holding it, you actually can take your power and drop it in half and have less heat at the end, finish off the weld, not have a divot in it, and not burn through the end. So it gives you total heat control of starting and stopping on the panel. The last selection here, we have gun selection itself, which is either going to be pulse synergic, synergic setting, standard gun, TIG gun, and a stick gun. So this machine will do stick welding, it will do TIG welding, you have to buy the setups for that. It'll do standard, like your standard steel MIG, It'll give you the standard voltage and wire speed selection. Synergic setting means that now when we change amps, voltage, or wire speed, it's going to automatically change the other ones in proportion to one another. So synergy means working together. And then the pulse synergy is going to be pulses for aluminum welding. And again, we're going to have a synergic setting on there that no matter what we adjust, everything's going to change in proportion to one another. So we are going to highlight pulse synergic. So that's our basic setup of telling it what type of wire is in it, what size wire, what trigger control, and what gun selection do we want on it. So that's our basic setup of the system. Now, to load wire on the system, not much different than your standard MIG welder. We do have a dual roller system on here, so that as we go along in here, we can flip this up. These are our rollers. Easy enough to change rollers out, they just pop out with a pin, 
These rollers are actually a nice Teflon roller designed to go from 0.8 diameter up to 1.6 diameter wire. So it's a nice universal roller for working with what we have. So that'll fit in the 1.2, that just clicks in, that falls down. Adjustment setting on here should be about number two. You don't want a lot of tension on the wire, just enough to roll the wire through here. It actually feeds really, really good. So on feeding the wire through, when you're loading a spool of wire, normally you take your gun, pull the trigger and hold it. On this, this has an independent override system on it that if we hit this button here that says inch forward, if I do that, that will actually roll wire out no gas is on, no electricity is running. So that gives me a manual override to run the system because there are settings in this machine that if you pull the trigger and it doesn't detect an arc, it will shut off the drive rollers automatically. So for loading wire, this is the best way of doing it with inch forward. For setting your gas setup, same thing. Again, check your gauge, see if you have cubic feet per hour or liters per minute. Audi recommends Dacians is 10 liters per minute, which equates out to 21 cubic feet per hour. That's actually in Audi's handbook when you go down to the welding class. You can also Google it on conversion rate for cubic feet per hour, CFH versus LPM. It'll give you that equation. It's just 2.1 to 1. It is pretty simple. We have our wire fed through. We have our gas set up. What I'd like to go through now is some of the menu boards on getting in on doing a factory reset and then being able to get into your hot start cold ending and how to change the settings on that. Before we get into that, I want to go through the little menus here up on top. So once this is set down here, that pretty much stays where it's at. This up here is what you're going to be setting up for whatever you're welding. So you have two menu boards up here. Whichever one is highlighted green, that's the one that's actually active. And this represents thickness of material amperage, wire speed, an overheat indicator. This will give you arc length correction. This will give you droplet control and voltage. So on this one, if I go, I'm on highlighted here, so I'm on metal thickness. This is 1.3 millimeters. So if I want to adjust thickness that I'm wor working on a thicker piece, if I bump this up, if you notice, voltage is going up with it, even though we're not controlling that right now. That's part of that synergic setting. So we actually can dial in our amperage rating with thickness also. So if I change any one of those four parameters, everything else will change in proportion to it according to the welding parameters. So if I go to metal thickness and I increase my metal thickness, it's automatically gonna increase metal thickness. If I'm showing amps, I change amps, it's gonna change voltage. If I show wire speed, I can change that, it's gonna change voltage it's going to change everything on those parameters. So the synergic setting is if you start out with metal thickness and we're welding on a 2.5 piece of material, that's going to put us at 82 amps, 3.8 meters per minute on wire speed and 18 and a half volts. So if I'm welding at 2.5 and it's a little bit too hot, if I back this down to 2.4 or 2.3, I've taken my amperage from 82, dropped it down to 75, my wire speed from 3.8 down to 3.5, and voltage went from 18.5 down to 18.2. So this is a very simple way of setting up your parameters for welding. Instead of trying to guess how many amps does it take, what should the wire speed be, if you go by metal thickness and you start welding, and it's welding too hot, back off on the metal thickness. If it's too cold, increase the metal thickness because it's going to take all your parameters and take, take a lot of the guesswork. This is going to get you close to the area of where you want to be for doing your welding. So that's a very simple setup on that board is maintain metal thickness and it will put everything else in proportion to where it needs to be. It gets you very close to where you want to be. So when we get into menu boards, there's a menu board under gun selection, there's a menu board under trigger control. Uh, menu board under this one here is basically for software in the system, so there's really no need of going into that one. But to get into some of the menu boards, so if we have trigger control and we're on special four step, what that does is that can will increase your, your hot setting by a percentage, and you can go in and change that percentage. 
Factory default on that is 135%. Same thing when you get to the end of the weld and you pull the trigger again, the factory default on that is 50%, which means it's gonna cut your power by 50% on that. So to get into that menu board to adjust that, this little button here that says store, if I just hit that, that's gonna go into what we call programs. And all these little numbers here, this will store up to 100 programs. The little N represents no program in number one, no program in number two. If you wanna put programs in here, you can pre-program the system yourself. In the instruction book, we'll tell you how to set your programs up. Right now, we basically go by going off a of metal thickness instead of setting up a program. So the store button, by hitting that once, gets you in there, hit it again, you're out of the store button. But if we push and hold the store button, and then I push this underneath my trigger, that actually gets me into the menu for my hot start. That's an S, that's a five. They're both look the same, but this is your starting current. Your starting current is 135% of whatever your normal welding current is. So if we're set at 2.5 on thickness and we're running at 82 amps, I'm going to be 135% hotter of that 82 amps. So when I first pull that trigger, I go on the cold metal and I get a nice hot start. Hold the trigger for about one to two seconds based on how thick or how thin your metal is. Let go of the button and then you're going to weld at your normal 82 amps. If I select down on this, we get into SL, which stands for slope. That means that our hot start up here is going to slope down in one second down to our normal welding of 82 amps. So you can adjust the one second, but the factory setting of one second is actually a pretty good one. It takes you down fast enough, but not too fast on getting down to your normal welding. So my next selection on here is going to be my ending current. And it's set at 50% on factory. And we can change that anywhere that we want to. The factory setting is on my 82 amps that I'm welding on normally, and my panel's now getting very hot to the end. When I pull the trigger, that drops me down to 41 amps. And the slope time is still there. It'll take one second to slope down, and it will be down at 41 amps, and then finish the weld. So this right here is a big control on your gun for when you start and when you go to end your weld because you can custom set your settings. If you think your hot start isn't hot enough, you can take that 135% and bump it up to 150 and try that, see if that's hot enough for you. If your ending seems to be a little bit too cold, you can actually bump that up to 60, 65. You can bump this anywhere that you want, but this helps give you the balance of where you want to be on your start and your ending of your weld. So these are only three items in here if we keep hitting that. It's just going to cycle around again. The only three things on there. So that's how you set your, you can adjust your hot start and you can adjust your cold ending. So store button, if I hit it again, it's going to exit out, put me back to the main screen. So if I want to go into menu underneath the gun selection, hold store button, go either one of these, hit that. That puts me into now a menu board of several different items. Most of these items we're not going to touch. A lot of these items that are in here are for setting up robotic settings. You're only, we're going to go in here, we're going to do a factory reset, and then we're only going to change two other items. So don't make this too complicated. Don't, you don't have to be concerned with the other items that are in there at this point. So if I go through this, this first one up, this GPR, that's called gas preflow. So that means when we pull the trigger, it's going to allow gas to flow for one-tenth of a second before we start welding. We want to have our shielding gas down on the piece of metal before we start welding. Well, I recommend on this that this should be bumped up to 0.5. The factory setting is 0.1. 0.5 is preferred because you want to allow gas to come down the, the hose first. So you get rid of the oxygen that's in the area for a good starting of the weld. That's gas preflow. That's gas post flow. When you let go of the trigger, when you're done welding, gas will still flow through it if you need it to help cool down the weld. Most guys in this business don't use that. If you control your weld right, you should be able to end it without having to do post flow. So normally it's set for half a second. Most guys don't end up using it. So it's really, it's up to you if you want to use it or not, but that's what it's for. So these next several items on here, we are not going to do anything with. The only other item I'm interested on here is this factory reset. So if somebody goes into the system that's welded on this before you, 
or you go down to one of the welding classes and you're going to be using the welder, do a factory reset because what it does, it just resets everything to known factory parameters. It gives you a good start because if somebody messes with something of one of the robotic settings, it will affect the way the machine welds. But it will take you forever to try and figure out what somebody changed. So the easiest way is just do a factory reset. And the way we do a factory reset, again, the store button does multi-functions. If I push it and let it go, we're out of the menu board. But if I push it and hold it, you're going to actually see that this is going to say PRO. It's going to go about two seconds, and it's going to say PRG. And that means that it's reprogrammed everything. So if I hold that, PRO comes up, and then PRG. And that means everything's been reprogrammed. And the way that I can figure that out, if I exit out of the menu board and I go look at the front screen, all these lights are in a different location and my thickness is actually reading in decimal points right now. It's actually a US measurement instead of a European measurement. So I can take my front board, reset everything, my diameter 1.2, take my wire down to 4043, want to go on four step and up to pulse synergic. I want to change that back over to metric settings. So if I go into menu board, push and hold, go into this. Now I can go into a second menu board. As this scrolls around, we're going to be back to gas preflow, which is factory reset back to point one. We'll bump that up to point five. If I scroll through again, it'll be the same thing that's on there. When I get into second, that allows me to get into a second menu board. So if I hold store button again, and push again, I am now into another menu board. So the only thing I'm looking for here is where it's going to say SET on this side of the screen. So as we go through this, where it says settings US, if I take that and move it back to standard, and I exit out of that board, I'm down to my first menu, exit out again, I'm now back to metric settings on the thickness. So that's how we do a factory reset. That's how we get back into the board and set it back to metric settings. I want to set gas preflow back to 0.5. I want to set settings back to standard or metric. And that's it. All the other items in there, you don't really need to mess around with. So to keep it very simple, that's how you get into the menu boards. That's how you do your adjustments. And that will get you where you want to go. If you guys have any questions, want more information, get us on the website or give us a call. Thanks, guys. Have a good day.